Hey everybody, welcome to Hills and Gills, and yeah, it is another hot one. It's supposed to get up to 104 today. We just can't get out of that heat wave. But I want to thank you all for joining me here today for my number two favorite topwater lure for river smallmouth fishing. We're counting down. The other day, we done number three, and that is the baby torpedo. Links down in the description for that, and it'll be right up here at the end of this video. But today, you can see I got a handful of poppers. The popper, or popper, or poppers in general, they are close to my number one favorite. They're a slow action lure, and I absolutely love them. Over the many years I've been fishing, I've caught a ton of smallmouth and largemouths on this bad boy right here. And uh, I'm going to show you a few that I've got right here with me today. Uh, this one's by Ozark Trail. I gave like a buck ninety-nine for this at Walmart. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a blackish silver looking. I've not had a chance to tie it on and try it, but we will in an up-and-coming video. And then you got the KVD one right here. This is the Strike King KVD. Uh, not had a chance to try it. And then when I'm lake fishing, if I'm fishing big body water uh, for large mouth, small mouth, and I'm throwing the popper, uh, I love this one right here. I don't always tell people, you know, try this one this is a good one but i'm going to encourage you to pick you one of these up right here if you run across them this is the baboya i really don't know the exact name of it but this is an excellent popper right here and you can just about see the size difference compared to the rebel popper right there there's a big difference in it and this is an excellent big body water uh popper i wouldn't care to throw it in the river but this is my go-to for when i'm fishing late now with the rebel popper and it has got a good medium range size so if you're fishing a river that's got a lot of small fish in it or that may have a mixed bag of small and big smallies in it you know i've caught them well over four pounds pushing upwards of five pounds uh through the years on this uh popper right here and one thing i like about the rebel popper is you can see that big cut in that lip right there in that mouth right there you can see that big deep cut in it and it doesn't take much of an action to get that thing with a good pop to it guys if you're just getting into fishing don't run out and buy expensive rod and reel don't run out and buy a 10 plus dollar popper you know go out get on amazon or go to walmart and see if you can find these in a value pack and just get you a nice little rod and reel i've got 10 pound test braid on this one right now the leader's got wore down some it's about six foot right now i've got an eight pound test leader on it and i got a little cast king spinning reel and this is my fenwick rod but you know any kind of nice little seven foot six and a half foot rod will work a little spin reel with you know eight six pound eight pound test you don't have to get an expensive expensive setup to have fun fishing whether you're fishing at the lake or at the river you know save you money for buying guys to get to the river or buying you a snack on the way to the river but with that being said guys let's go down to the water and i'll show you how i use the popper okay first of all let's talk about how i retrieve a pop, uh, the popper in when i'm fishing like a big pocket of water i may be wading up this side over here and casting over into the channel over into the deeper section I'll just give you a little i'll just give you a little demonstration here i'll let that lure set you know the two foot ring rule but i like keeping my rod up at about 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock when I make a long cast. Now as that lure is coming in, as I'm retrieving that popper in, when it gets about 15 foot out from me or so, I slowly start working that rod tip down toward the water till I get the lure in and I'll just start popping up about 10 or 11 o'clock. I'll give it a pop, I'll let it set for about a second and then I'll double it up. I'll give it maybe two pops. And as I'm working it in, you can see my line flipping off the water as it lays down. I'm not even retrieving the lure. I'm just letting it set there because a pop bar or any kind of popper is a slow 
action type lure and you can really let it set in a strike zone for a long period of time you don't need to be bringing it through there rushing that lure in popping it and bringing it ripping it across the area just let it sit there just pop it allow that slack to hit the water just make it look like a wounded bug a wounded bait fish on top of the water give those fish time to hone in on it and come up and eat it and just allow it to sit there stationary that's what i'm trying to do i'm just trying to tease tempt those fish into biting say there's some chunk rock under the water maybe some wood or whatever you got a nice cut in the bank on the other side and you want that lure to sit there in that strike zone as long as possible I've seen people make a cast out, they'll let that lure hit, and they think that you gotta give hit gigantua pops. They think that you gotta, it's gotta look like a fish is coming up hitting it. I like just giving it nice little settle pops, let it sit there for a second or two, or watch you lure. When those rings get off about two foot, pop it again. And always remember when you're out there fishing, you may bring it in at one pop, let it set, bring it in, and then you may make another cast right over to the spot and just give it a steady retrieve, just like this right here. Or you may switch it up, give it maybe two quick pops, let it set, then one steady pop. One pop, then a couple of quick pops. And find out what the fish is wanting in your river when you're fishing. Me and Brandon's been out fishing before, and one of us will start getting hit, start uh, getting on the fish, and you know, we'll ask each other, how you retrieving that in? And find out what the fish likes, then start using that retrieval. And a lot of times, you will get your strikes on a popper when it wants pops and it's sitting there, be ready because most of the time that's when they're coming up to eat it is when it stops. So that's a good tip to remember and always remember, wait till you feel that fish before you set the hook. Don't set that hook just off that splash. You'll miss a lot of fish doing that right there. Coming down to a section where the current, where it's necking up, just like what I was talking about with the torpedo, I do the same technique with the popper. I want to make a cast to the other side, let it hit, allow those rings to break, and then I just sit there and I let the current do the work for me. I'll just pop it along, allowing that current to pull it down through there in that strike zone because early morning, late evening, those smallies will be laying right in the edge of those shows feeding up on bait fish that is pushing up from one spot to the next or that is moving down the river so i'll just let it sit there i'll just pop it along let it sit in one spot that's what i love about them and that is a killer way to use them when you're fishing you know the head of a show okay guys when you get to a section like this in the river and you know we're under the bridge here there may be like a little deep pocket on the other side with a lot of current moving through a lot of times those smallmouth they'll move up they'll lay over our style that current resting they may be over our feeding on crawfish bait fish or whatever and you know when you cast over there you never want to cast and then drop your rod and let your line get in the water because like i was saying a popper is a slow action lure and you know it ain't like a dog walker and you want to keep that rod tip as high as you can get it keep that line out of that current and stop that horseshoe effect or rainbow effect because if you cast over and you allow that line to hit the water it's going to start sweeping down the river and when you start working that lure in instead of it coming straight across through that strike zone in those chunk rocks over there it's going to start doing that bow effect that, that horseshoe effect so i'll show you right here what i'm talking about if you cast over with a popper you allow that line to get in the water when you start working it in that lure is going to start working down river instead of across the river and you're going to end up out in the current so one thing to prevent that when you make your cast over into that little shallow spot keep that rod tip high keep that line out of that current and just pop it along keep that rod tip up about 11 or 12 o'clock and you can see that lure worked all the way across that zone where you could potentially get a smiley. You can have a small mouth laying right in that swift water right here that could be feeding. I cast right in that current and I work, I keep my rod tip high and I bring that popper, letting it free float down through there as I'm popping it in. And I have caught a ton of smallmouth uh, doing that little technique right there. 
and you can see we've got some current coming in or shows as I call it and this is ideal like early morning late evening for these small mouth large mouth to move up and start feeding now a lot of times you can catch a lot of smallies right out of the swift water I catch a ton out of them but you get a lot of strikes over in the eddy area just like right over there where the current kindly fades away and gets down in the middle of the river you got that eddy spot over next toward the shoreline they'll move in there to ambush bait fish and they'll lay out the current to rest and when you're casting over in a spot like that i've got a rule when i'm casting like eddy areas that i allow that lure to hit and the rings to get about a two foot in diameter before i start working it in but when you're fishing where there's really a lot of current and there's an eddy spot on the other side of the river where you're casting one thing you don't want to do and that is cast across and allow your line to hit in the water and you don't want to wait for that lure to sit there for a couple seconds like you would in an eddy spot you want to start working it as soon as it hits because you'll get that rainbow effect do you see where my line is right now it is already out in the current and when i start working it instead of working across the strike zone like i wanted to my lure even though i'm working it back toward me it's going to follow suit with that fishing line and it's going to go out into the current and i'm going to miss all that good fishing over there so the way i do it when i'm fishing and i've got a nice looking hot spot on the other side of the river and i've got current between us i'll cast across as soon as it hits i will keep my rod tip up and high and i will keep my line as high as possible off of that fast moving rock water and I will start working that lure in and I will also turn my rod toward the river and that way it's allowed my lure to work right up that strike zone, right up the edge of that current and I don't have to worry about my line being in the water and pulling me out in away from the fish. Well guys, I wanna thank everybody for joining me uh, You know on how I use a popper in certain situations in the river, whether I'm fishing like shows, currents, pockets, and so on, how I hold my rod, how I keep my rod tip up when I'm fishing, and so on. I hope that helped you out if you're new to using poppers or thinking about getting into topwater fishing. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you know, it is hot out here. I am burning up. I just checked the temperature a few minutes ago. It's 101 right now. It's super hot. I'm gonna go in, find me a cool place, get me something cool to drink, if you like the videos, guys, I hope you give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to check Torpedo out at the end of this one. Subscribe to our channel if you're not subscribed. We got a lot more fishing coming down the line, and we got my number one all-time favorite topwater lure that I've caught my most and my biggest smallmouth on. Not just a river, but lake as well. I'm talking five-pound-plus smallmouth I've caught on this lure. It's my go-to lure. I'm going to be bringing that coming up here next. I hope you stay tuned for that. Until then, guys, follow us over on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And stay safe out there in this heat. Drink a lot of fluids. And we'll see you right here in the next one at Hills and Gills. Have a great day.